Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. Welcome back. It's 34 after the hour. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for hanging out with me. My pleasure to get here to be with you. I'm Jim Blassingame, and you're listening to the Small Business Advocate Show. That's my website, too, smallbusinessadvocate.com. Hope you check it out when you get a chance. We've got lots of stuff there, including a poll question. This week, uh, our question is about about the, the weather. What do you think about the weather? Do well, you think it's global warming, or do you think it's just winter? And so we'd like to know what you think. Ask the, answer the question, and, and uh, you'll see how the poll is going so far. Having a great visit with our good friend, uh, Guy Sermon. Guy is uh, the author of Economics Does Not Lie. He's a, uh, a, a fellow, an outstanding fellow with the Manhattan Institute and uh, spends most of his time in France, but uh, is a world traveler as well. Just returned from, from the Far East, meaning China, Japan, and, uh, and Korea. And, and Guy, you just gave us a little report on your thoughts on China. Very interesting. And, and then you went to Japan, and I wanted to ask you this question. Back in, in the eight, late 80s, uh, Americans were kind of getting a little bit uh, paranoid about, about Japan's strength, its power, how it was beating us on so many levels and buying a lot of property in the United States. And there was a lot of concern for that. And then we found out in the early 90s that a lot of that had been propped up by the government. And when the government pulled its, its, uh, its support back, the economy went into a, into a recession that it really hasn't come out of. So my question to you is, now that we're having the same feelings about China, is it possible that China could become more like Japan than what we think, what, what we're worried about right now? What do you think? Well, those are two very different stories. But uh, regarding China, I mean, we have no reason to fear China. I mean, we have to understand that it's basically a very poor country. Uh, they have not been yet able to find a solution to integrate into the modern economy approximately 600 million people are uh, living in complete poverty. Two, uh, two, two not... si- that's twice the size. Now, those, the number of people, folks, that's twice the, the population of the United States. Yes. So their, their, their main problem is still a domestic problem and a poverty problem. And, and, it's, their, about, and it's about half of their population, basically, isn't it? It's, a, it's a, approximately half of the population. And the, uh, the Chinese officials, they admit that they would need at least... 30 years of development to be able to integrate these people in a modern economy. Yeah. The health problem is huge. Education problem is huge. So uh, I think they are really, they are mostly focused on their domestic problem yeah. because also they know, uh, this being a dictatorship, they know that, you know, if there is some unrest in the Communist Party uh, could be destroyed by the is, people. Is what's happening in Egypt a, a threat to, to China? Um... Well, it's could, it, could, could that cascade go that far? No, it's a different story for two reasons. First, in Egypt, there was no economic development at all. In China, there is some hope. And second, the Communist Party is much better organized than the Egyptian yeah. uh, regime. Yeah. You know, the Chinese Communist government, they are really expert in, in, in population control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they've, done, they've, done, they've, done a, they've done such a good job of that. They've got uh, hundreds of millions of young men who don't have, who don't have uh, uh, spouse opportunities. Yeah, I mean, they... Uh, well, they've got a bunch, China, of, got a mean, bunch you know, of grumpy young men over there, uh, Guy. Yeah, but, you know, the, 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 pro- what, the, the similarity, if, if any, between Egypt and China is the following. In both cases, you have a large number of educated young people without a job. And this may be dangerous for China as it is for Egypt. But the Communist Party guys, you know, they are really tough. Yeah. Interesting. So let's let's, now, when you went to Japan, what did you find? Well, I, I, it was I was flabbergasted by I was I I saw something which I wasn't expecting. I know Japan quite quite well. Uh, Mm -hmm. I I will tell you, Japan is back. Wow. Japan is back. Why? Because they have, I mean, hundreds of middle-sized company, usually family-owned, and which have totally changed their strategy. You know, you don't hear that much of Japan anymore on the consumer market. Right. You know, uh, they have a lot of competitors. I mean, they, uh, uh, you don't go to, to Sony, you go to iPad, iPhone, and things like that. But 
uh, they shifted to component industries, which means that if you buy a smartphone in the United States, one third is made in Japan. Ah. Uh, if you build a, a nuclear factory anywhere in the world, the reactor is built in Japan. And uh, if you build the next Boeing Dreamliner, one third is made in Japan. You don't know about it because yeah. those are components. And that's, you know. and that's good business for Japan, isn't it? That's great business. And, and you know what? I discovered that some 300 middle-sized companies in Japan have the, 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 they have a worldwide monopoly. I mean, you need carbon wow. fiber to build a Boeing. There is only one producer. It's in Japan. Wow. You need to build a smartphone. You need a specific component. Mm -hmm. There are only two companies in Japan able to do it. So we have so Japan. So Japan could become shift. a significant contributor to the reco the global recovery. The candidate. Japan is becoming a yeah. significant uh, a partner in the recovery. And what they did is a complete, in 20 years, they complete changes to the, the strategy. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. shifted from the consumer market from business to business. In business to business, they are so good, you know, in sophisticated components that everybody is running behind them. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, and, and but, but both of those countries, Japan and China, have demographic issues that well, are, are, yeah. are tr 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 we have to watch. When we come back after these messages, I'm going to ask Guy to tell us about North Korea, I'm mean, sorry, South Korea, where he mm -hmm. was also, and some of the issues that he sees there. Very, this is fascinating stuff, folks. Guy, thank you so much for, for making the trip and then coming back and sharing what you found there. We're going to take a quick break, folks. Tintail, right back with Guy Sermon after these messages. His book is called Economics Does Not Lie. When you wake up in the morning some cheap sunglasses. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience. Except as otherwise provided by copyright law, all other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved. Prohibited. All rights reserved. Prohibited. 